it's Python on Hardware Time. We have a gigantic newsletter. There's a lot of things in it. Um, I'll mention two things, and then we're going to talk about the thing that people are going to have questions <laughs> about later. So I may as well just uh, use that for this segment. So CircuitPython 802 is released. Uh, bug fixes and more updates when we do a 80 release or any you know major release, then we immediately start to have some other releases afterwards. And then um, you can check Which out. Great. I actually love that we do quick release. Right after a big release, we do a lot of little mini releases. Yeah. Because it means that people are using it and they're getting all the little... We try to test, but we don't test rapid, it. We can't test everything. Rapid feedback. Um, you can check out some of these neat things. You can use an iPad or an Android with uh, CircuitPython, MicroPython. And um, there's this neat block-level device for CircuitPython. Mm -hmm. remote yeah. Yeah. I know. Isn't that cool? So it's you can... Mm. Yeah, I know, right? Interesting. Yeah. You could do that over like a remote house. That, that might be good for our little uh, kid toy. Where That's you... right. Yeah. One of the things. So one of the things that I looked into, right? Because it's um, when you do uh, UART, you can do like you know UART over um, uh, web, right? Because you just send data back and forth. Um, and so we have you know web serial that we have a REPL um, for. But how do you do file transfer? And I was like, oh man, I wonder if you could write like NFS or Samba on um on a, like a low level microcontroller but it turns out it's actually a little bit too complicated um you know nfs also isn't supported as much but i tried to do samba but it turns out there's no like microcontroller samba implementation but wouldn't that be cool if it showed up as a disk drive and you just like dragged your files over yeah maybe when we get to the bigger chips we can do that you know then yeah. we get to like the m7 chips on a uh unrelated note to this but i was just reading about this before um we started doing some of our shows today you know there's a lot of uh talk about Chat GPT and Copilot and Ghostwriter and all these things that uh, some of it is for human language and some of it is for programming. Um, the programming stuff's interesting. I, I saw someone today was talking about its uh, Replit. It uh, they have something called Ghostwriter, which helps you write code. And on one hand, you know, it could be dangerous because you know you can get a bunch of code that's nonsense or, or garbage. But the other hand, um, what they did is they hooked it up in the REPL. And I thought that was really neat because the 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 AI was using code and going back and forth with the programmer, and they had it plugged into a REPL, and eventually you it got it right. Huh. Because a REPL is interactive. Like that's one of the things I really like about CircuitPython and just Python in general is you can you can kind of do very fast iterations. When we were doing Cricket for Adabox and we were doing a lot of robotic stuff, it was just like kind of I I can't imagine compiling and then sending it to a microcontroller over and over. Um, but anyways, uh, check that out. There's a lot of, I think that's going to be a more interesting use of some of this stuff other than just like, oh, write the code for me. I think it's going to be more of like a partnership between um, a huge amount of human language um, ability that can get you the code that you're looking for and then interactively working on it in a REPL. Anyways, um, so uh, the news of the week um, that I wanted you to talk about, Lady, because someone's going to ask about this, is, um, and we're going to have, a, we have it as a new product too. Um, what is, is a, this? It's a Raspberry Pi uh, debug probe. Why in the world would Raspberry Pi release this and, and what does it do? And why is it interesting? Um, so the Raspberry Pi debug probe, it's an official product from the Pi Foundation. And of course it features the RP, RP2040 and it's like RP2040 debugception, right? Because you're using an RP2040 to debug an RP2040. Um, the RP2040 chip is based on the ARM Cortex uh, M0 Plus chipset, which means it has SWD debug, which is actually nice. It's a standard uh, for debugging these chips. And if you're used to, like me, if you've done like printf debugging, which works, you know, totally fine. You print where you are and you just sort of figure out um, where your program's crashing or what the values are. Um, but once you get to any complexity, uh, GDB step debugging is really the way to go. And that's where you, you know, connect to it and you can step through line by line the code and print out all the variables. I mean, it's very, very powerful. Um, I, you know, love using GDP for more complicated projects and it will definitely help you find like those really tough bugs. You can have it watch a variable when the variable changes, it interrupts, or when you enter a function or when you exit a function or whatever, it's, it's, you know, awesome. Um, but the issue is, uh, you know, SWD, um, the programmer dongles are kind of expensive. Um, you know, even, even the cheapest J-Link right now is like 60 bucks. Uh, they're very good. They're totally worth the money. But if you're a student, uh, or you're just a beginner, you maybe you don't want to spend, you know, you start at 60, it easily goes up to a thousand dollars. 
um, for these debug probes. So um, this is a SimSys DAP compatible debug probe that is designed to work with OpenOCD, which is an open source um, debug connector. And then you would use GDB to step through um, your program and, and see where it's failing. It's useful for when you're writing code in Arduino or C, C++ using the Pico SDK. In CircuitPython, you know, you would use this to debug the CircuitPython core, not to debug your CircuitPython program. I think I mean, you could, but it would be weird because your code is being interpreted, right? Um, but for people who are doing, you know, Arduino or C, C++ programming, this is really great. Um, it's got two ports. And we'll talk about it in the new product section, but there's a UART port. So it also has a USB to serial converter, which is handy because you can also do printf debugging. And then the debug port, which is that SWD port. And um, there's on the Pico H, there's a plug that it goes in directly. But, um, you know, these pins can be um, plugged into, it comes with cables. It can be plugged into a breadboard or soldered. A lot of our, our designs, um, you know, like the Feather have an SWD connector you would just plug these pins into instead. All right, um, get that delivered to your inbox every single week. Um, I found on Hardware Newsletter. Go to adafruitdaily.com. It's a completely separate site. It has nothing to do with your store. We don't spam you. We don't harvest your emails. We don't do anything like that. That's why I have a separate site just for newsletters. So go check it out at Adafruit Daily. Free service provided by Adafruit just to show cool stuff with Python on Hardware.